Tim Van Milligan, if anybody doesn't know me. Uh, my project was uh, on the development of a new and simplified helicopter rotor hub. Uh, this project started last year when my daughters decided they wanted to compete for the FAI trials. And we started looking at existing designs, and because uh, we had to catch up real fast, because we didn't know anything about FAI helicopters. And uh, pretty much every helicopter uses this little piece of uh, plastic that's called a Dubro hinge or a nylon hinge. And they are very cheap, they are your friend, and they are your enemy. Because if you get glue in that little pin, that thing is seized up and you got to throw it away. And if you do that while you're building the rocket, it's just really frustrating. And I had to remember I was designing this rocket for my daughters, and they were, at the time they were 8 and 13 years old. So, you know, they're, they don't have the, uh, the hand-eye coordination that an adult would have. Uh, next slide. So I started looking at existing technology. Um, besides the plastic hinge, you also have some designs that have wire hinges. Uh, this is from, uh, this is a Rosa Rock design from Fliss Kits and he uses a wire hinge there. And uh, way back in 19, uh, maybe 2000, 2001, there was a, a, a rocket from the Europeans called the Spin Doctor, and it also had a wire hinge. It was very similar to this. Um, and then we started doing research on what existing designs that people were using. And, we, and you can find these, these photos on the, uh, the internet's FAI website, Trip Barber and Chris Flanagan put together. Um, this shows an existing design, and again, you see the, the nylon hinges, and you see a central hub with a, uh, a graphite shaft that runs through the middle of it. And all these are internal bladed helicopters. Um, you can go ahead, go to the next one. This is, a, again, that same type of design. Uh, you also see that there's a post right here where that the helicopter blade is attached to that post and then within the post is attached to the, um, the nylon hinge. And any time you're attaching two things together, there's a glue joint. So there's a, a whole bunch of glue joints. And they also put the, the hinge, uh, they sandwiched it between two pieces of wood um, because nothing really sticks to that, uh, that nylon. So by sandwiching it, it really captures it well. The, the problem is now you got glue on both sides. So there's more chances of glue getting into that, that hinge. Next one. Because this is another design. You can see how complex they are. And, and because it's hard to glue to that nylon hinge, they, they wrap um, thread around the post and through the holes in the hinge, and that holds everything together. You can see there's, there's how many places there are for glue joints here. Also, the, the, the cool thing about this design was this post here, when it, uh, it was longer than the, the, uh, the blade itself, and it would, it would come down and set the dihedral for the helicopter blade. And, and everybody knows when you fly a helicopter, you want the, the blades up so that it orients itself and it spins down nicely. And so I thought that was a really cool feature. Go ahead, next. Um, this is another design that didn't have and so to set the dihedral, they used um, pieces of thread, and I call these uh, limit threads, because it limits how, how the travel of the blade and how far it can go up. The problem with those is they're very complex to set the, the, the dihedral. Go ahead and next. So the first thing that I did is I took all those existing designs, and I had access to a laser cutting machine, and I, I laser cut my, uh, my disc, and I cut little triangles, and all this really helped my daughters to put the rocks together. They, they could just put it together like a jigsaw puzzle. The, cool, the, the one part that I was really proud of was that lightning bolt shaped part, and then I called the, uh, the post. Go ahead to the next one. And what it, this did, you can see it here, was it really set that dihedral angle really well before they had to sand the, the tip of that post to get the dihedral, and I thought that was really hard to do to set up dihedral. So by doing that, um, we, we had a really good design, and that's the one that we used uh, for the tryouts last year, and I put it in this model. At the time we had, uh, you can pull it out, take a look at it. 
At the time, uh, it was in a fiberglass tube, but the, 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 these tubes don't last very long, so now I put it in a paper tube. Let me do the next. And this is um, how I designed it. I draw, I draw everything in Adobe Illustrator. I don't use a CAD program for this, I just use Illustrator. And I draw everything one to one scale. And you can see, here's my rotor blade. Here's my, I call it the lightning bolt. And you can see how when it flips up, you get the nice dihedral angle set there. Uh, the one problem with this design was how do you glue the rotor blades on? Because the rotor blades are simply glued onto the post, and you can get them crooked. And once you get a, a rotor blade cooked, crooked, you know, now your, your blades aren't spaced 120 degrees apart anymore. You know, you could have one at 130 degrees. It's like putting on a thing, you know. So what I found is what that other flyers were doing, they were making these complex fixtures to glue that, the, uh, the post to the blade. Go ahead, next. And then I got this idea, why don't I just put a, sh a slot in the blade itself and make a little tab on the post? And that's what I did here. And now everything was aligned real quick. That was a real quick fix, and I liked it, so I kept it. So next. And, and basically, I, I borrowed this, this design from an old helicopter that I did when I was at Estes. Um, this was the Skywinder. And the other cool feature was, was that this little hump where the post sticks through, I realized I could put a rubber band. And, it, and in this one that's going around here, you'll see there's little there's little music wire hooks that you would attach a rubber band to. I could get rid of those music wire hooks, and that's one more glue joint. Next. Then I got to thinking about the hinge itself, these nylon plastic hinges. Could I get rid of that? And I was talking with a couple of people, one was John Borns at Estes, another one was Dan Kathan, and they told me that with a laser cutter you could cut, you know, blades, and they showed me designs that they had done using metal posts instead of the plastic hinges. And this was one of his designs that used the metal post. Next. So then I redesigned everything and decided to go to a metal post instead of a hinge. And so this is similar to what was before. I have my rotor blade in the post. And I can see here's the tab that goes through and I can hook my rubber band right there. Um, but at the top, um, Right here is where the little pin is going to go. You'll notice it's on the bottom of the plate, and, and that was important because I needed more leverage for when it rotates up. Let's see right up in here. And I have a little little spur on the top that sets the dihedral, just like it was when, when I had the uh, little lightning bolt shaped part. And the hub itself had now I. Um, I cut off the edges, you know, to save a little weight, and the, the, the hub, or the, the, the little post itself will slide between this, and that keeps everything straight. And this is kind of what the hub looks like now, and you can take a look at it. And that's what's, that's what's going around the room. You can see I, I also put a couple of holes in it just to take out weight. And now I've changed it to other sizes as well. This is, this is a completed model. You can take that one out. You can pull all the way out if you want. Um, I, I, so I started with a 40 millimeter. Now I've gone down to a 24 millimeter. And this is what we're flying here at NARA. And I, I call this rocket the gyro chaser. You can actually buy it at Apogee Components. And I know there's a number of people that are using them in competition. My daughters were asking me why I'm giving away all my stuff. <laughs> and I says, Money. College fund. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the gyro chaser. It uses basically the same design. Um, the posts and everything are the same. The, hub, the, the, the actual hub is a little bit smaller. And then I said, how small can I make it? And so I made one that was an 18 millimeter diameter. And all, it folds up and will slide into a BT-22. That's how small it is. And it actually does work. And uh, these are the parts laid out. These are the most critical parts right here is, is the, the disc and then the, uh, the support arms where everything attaches to. And you can kind of, kind of see what the shape looks like of the blade itself. And that really concludes my presentation. So, go ahead. Questions? Seven seconds. <laughs> Um, so 
I, I still call it a skill level five because there are, I wasn't able to eliminate all the glue joints. The only way to do that is to go to molded plastic like we did with the Estes Skyrider. Um, I wanted something that was lightweight and something that a modeler could build and could be shared. So we're, we're I forget what the question was. It, it, it's, it's still tricky. Um, you've got to be careful of getting glue in the post um, on that one little hinge pin, but you can use thick glue instead of thin glue. And so it, there's, there's kind of a sequence that you go through, and, and in the kit itself, I actually make a video to show you exactly how to do it. And everybody that's built one, they've loved them so far. It's, it's the, the, the thinness of the wood itself, of the, of the blades. I was using 132nd inch, and I wish I had something even a little bit smaller to give a little less friction as the, as the blades are sliding down the tube. Because you're so tight in there, it's kind of like you know, squeezing into a small hole. It can be done. You think you, think you can get it to work in 18 Yeah, I do. It's, it's just a matter of plan. The, the nice thing about 3D printers, you can mold a lot of this, a lot of the hard parts, you know, like you could take out all the glue. You could actually just make it a snap together thing. Um, it would take a little bit more in the design end, but then once you have that, then it's just pushing a button and printing them out. Um, and if I had access to a 3D printer, I, I'd probably play with it a little bit. It'd probably be, you, we're, we're talking, you know, the thinness of the plastic is so light, it would probably be really lightweight. Probably pretty comparable. The, the advantage of, of what I'm using here is the plywood. And here, uh, here's all the different plywood pieces. This three sizes, an 18, 24, and 40 millimeter. You can pull them out and play with them. Uh, plywood is really strong. Even, I was using uh, 1 32nd inch plywood. So the advantage of plywood is you got the, the wood going in cross direction, you get a lot of strength. Um, I have broken gliders. The, with these gliders, or these helicopters, you pick them up and you start walking with them and you're dragging them behind you, they're spinning like crazy. Uh, if you take one of those helicopters and you, you drop it in within six inches, it's already spinning. So if you're walking and pulling it behind you, you're creating a lot of drag and I've broken them doing that. So when you pick these up, you immediately have to collapse them down, stuff them in the tube, so they, they don't start spinning, spinning by themselves. And tomorrow, um, if you're here, uh, my daughter Allison is going to talk about the blades themselves and how to make them spin even better. Okay, audience questions? Okay, Chris? Um, have you considered using like a polished stainless steel pin and then just building it with wood glue? then it won't stick. You just move it and it'll crack the glue holding the pin and it's free. Um, yeah, the, 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 if you look at the, the hinge, the, the one that's going around the room, it's, 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 you're taking a piece of metal and you're bonding it right to the surface of the plywood. And so with wood glue, there's the chance, it's, it's, it's not as strong as, as super glue, so it can pop off easier. <laughs> that's it, because it's too slick. Do you find that uh, there's any bend? You know, it's, it's important to keep the blade at the right angles. So. Yeah. With um, yes, I, I did have one one hub that kind of warped a little bit, and what you can do on those is you can on the underside you have a lot of room, so you just you can make radial arms 120 degrees apart to stiffen up that plate so that it doesn't warp on you at all. But I haven't, you know, for the kit stuff, we're, we're talking so small it didn't matter. The 40 millimeter is where you have to worry about it. There's one more question. Is there a on your design? <laughs> no, I, uh, 
I have a patent on the uh, Estes Skywinder, and I don't make any money on it. And uh, you know, like, like I said, you know, I, I, I want to get this out there. It, it, I think it's a better design. Uh, it's, it's, it's simplified. I go. There's only eight parts in that hub, where on the traditional ones that used before, it was there was a lot more, probably about three times as many. All right, we're out of time.